Good day. I'm Cora Johnson, and these are my colleagues Regan Reed and Victoria Clausen. Today we are presenting ongoing class research on secondary succession at Point Pleasant Park following Hurricane Juan. Our study is being conducted in Untakoi, a traditional gathering place of the Mi'kmaq community, meaning a place of the spirits. This area is part of the unceded and treaty territory of the Mi'kmaq people. We are all treaty people. Located in Halifax, Nova Scotia, Point Pleasant Park is 75 hectares of land formerly used as a British defensive site placed between the Northwest Arm and the Halifax Harbour. As of a study in 1985, Point Pleasant Park's forests consist of 80% of standing trees, such as red spruce. This forest was considered overmature, with half the trees over 85 years old and little under canopy growth. To compensate for deforestation in the surrounding areas, new species of trees like the red maple were introduced. As of 2008, there were over 35 kilometers of trails within the park and over 1.5 million visitors each year, making Point Pleasant Park a staple in the community. Two decades ago, Hurricane Juan made landfall on September 29, 2003 in Halifax, significantly impacting Point Pleasant Park. This Category 2 hurricane had wind speeds up to 145 kilometers an hour and created widespread damages in tree populations. Because of Hurricane Juan, Point Pleasant Park lost 85% of the tree populations. The successional theory pertains to a population's response to a large disturbance, generally resulting in an increased richness and diversity. A plant, in this case trees, recolonization of habitat following a major disturbance, in this case hurricane, is called secondary succession and is what this study aims to observe. As the overall density increases, this community will reach an endpoint following the succession, called the Climax Community. Over the past two decades, surveys have been conducted observing the tree populations following this hurricane. Turchin observed an overall abundance of trees in Point Pleasant Park increase 40-fold in the nine years following the hurricane. We aim to exer examine how and why secondary succession is occurring in Point Pleasant Park by studying the changes in the forest community over time using data collected at four sites located in the most impacted areas of the park. So our first research question is how has the overall forest community changed over time? Our second is how has the density of the dominant species in 2004 as well as the dominant species in 2023 changed over time? And our third is how has the chosen community metric changed over time? We're also going to look at how all these influence the overall forest community as it moves towards its climax community. Our first hypothesis is that total species density will increase following Hurricane Juan in 2004, creating increased crowding in the overall forest community as it moves towards its climax community. Our second is that the ratio of red spruce and maple will stay constant. And our third is that over time, species richness will increase as the forest community continues to recover from the effects of Hurricane Juan. Point Pleasant Park's forest canopy was uprooted and damaged due to the high wind speeds produced by Hurricane Juan. Data from tree density and diameter breast height can be processed and turned into graphs that compare diversity. After Hurricane Juan, the total density of tree species in Point Pleasant Park increased 34-fold between 2004 and 2023. Figure 2 represents this. There is a basic linear increase after the hurricane based on the steep increasing regression slope. There is an average of around 10 new species per area per year up until 2015. After 2015, the total density then seems to plateau out, suggesting that the population had reached its climax community post-2015, a condition of this being the data's greater variability. This data suggests that while variable under the same environmental conditions, future total density will remain at its apparent climax community, which is congruent with Churkin. This is an example of environmental stochasticity and the influence of extreme weather events that they can have on community populations. Given figure 2 with the increase following by the decrease in the total density up until 2015, this could suggest that species crowding may have been a driver in the total density decrease. And this does support our first hypothesis. Following Hurricane Juan, red spruce populations seen in figure 3a were low with a steady increase of threefold between 2004 and 2023. Red maple, on the other hand, as seen in figure 3b, experienced a 36-fold increase between 2004 and 2023, becoming the dominant species. This differs from the hypothesis that red spruce and red maple densities would stay consistent. This difference in dominance and density is likely due to the growth rate difference between the two species. 
Red spruce has a longer growth rate and persists for 350 to 450 years, whereas red maple only persists for 150. As seen in Figure 3b and in Turchin's research, there is a strong peak in red maple's density, changing from a 48-fold increase between 2006 and 2015 to a 36-fold increase between 2004 and 2023. This is paired with red spruce's density increase from 1.5-fold to 3-fold over the same time. Overall, this would support that red spruce will increase in the density ratio, which contrasts the hypothesis that the ratio between red maple and red spruce would remain the same. Additionally, this also differs from the tree populations prior to the hurricane as Point Pleasant Park was once dominated by red spruce and other soft-standing trees. This likely means the forest has not completely reached the climax community and is near the beginning of late succession. This is evident in the total density explained previously, as well as the apparent peak near 2015 in the density data from red maple and spruce compared to turgeons. As the forest is still fluctuating, the red maple is likely to stay the dominant species. However, it is likely for other species like red spruces that have a higher, to have a higher ratio in the overall density of the forest. Figure 4 illustrates how species richness has increased during the study. Using linear regression, the overall link between species richness and time was examined. The results produced an R-squared value of 0.64, indicating that 64% of the variability in species richness is correlated to time. In addition, a p-value of less than 0.05 was calculated. Therefore, it can be concluded that these results are statistically significant and there is a strong positive connection between this measurement of diversity with respect to time. As well, an increase in species richness following a disturbance, which is displayed by the dotted trend line in Figure 4, aligns with the successional theory's projected path. That richness will increase as a developing community makes use of newly available resources. Therefore, based on these pieces of evidence, I can predict that species richness in Point Pleasant Park will continue to increase moving towards its climax community. Additionally, Figure 5 is a proposed model of forest ecosystem recovery following a disturbance. Focusing on phase 2 labeled aggradation, there is a significant increase in biomass during this phase of recovery. Comparing the dotted trend line in figure 4 to the slope of the line in figure 5, there are obvious similarities which could place Point Pleasant Park's recovery somewhere in phase 2. As well, an increase in abundance of trees in Point Pleasant Park is equivalent to an increase in biomass. I can conclude that the increase in species richness signifies a more diverse environment. Pairing that with the changes in Point Pleasant Park's forest community being consistent with the trends described in the successional theory, this indicates that as the forest moves towards its climax community, it is in simultaneous recovery. My findings partially support my original hypothesis that species richness will increase as the forest community recovers. However, once the forest reaches its climax community, species richness will instead stabilize and then fluctuate from time to time. This is shown in Figure 5 during the final phases. The results of this study suggest that the Acadian Forest in Point Pleasant Park experienced secondary successional trajectories after catastrophic disturbance and is currently experiencing late succession. Total density took about 14 years to reach climax community after a major environmental event. Red maple is the dominant species compared to red spruce. The growth rate of red maple has slightly decreased, whereas red spruce is steadily increasing. And species richness has a positive, strong correlation with biomass. Now, urban parks can face additional challenges regarding succession. For example, many urban parks contain non-native species like the red maple in Point Pleasant Park. As seen in question 2 results, the introduced red maple influenced secondary succession with competition, a challenge many urban parks face post-disturbance. Also, since this park is a staple of the community and is used for daily nature walks and walking dogs, there are many disturbances that could affect the ecosystem. For example, organisms such as squirrels and birds, if they're fed by humans in these urban parks, there is likely a reduction in seed dispersal in the forest community. One indigenous practice that can be applied to Point Pleasant Park in this study is the seventh generation principle, which is the idea about how making the decisions today will affect future generation, and is mainly in reference to the land's health. The general idea is that making environmentally friendly decisions now will ensure a sustainable 
environment for future generations. This further drives home the importance of the conservation of these community green spaces. We want to express our thanks to the fall students who went into the field and collected data each year for this study, as well as Christine Bowenkamp for initiating this research project. We appreciate the work done by Allison Schmidt, who made the graphs and calculated the statistics used throughout the presentation. Additionally, we want to thank the Mi'kmaq people for the use of their traditional and ancestral territory. So what are some examples of how species crowding can affect density? In his 26th of January lecture on crowding and population limits, Arletta explained how crowding affects population density by altering conditions and resources. As population density increases, there become fewer resources per individual and the community will quickly use up all these resources. With limited resources, birth, birth rate will decrease and death rate will increase, causing a decrease in the total population density. One example of this can be described by figure six, which shows that as sheep population increases due to crowding, birth rates decrease, causing an overall decrease in total density. As demonstrated through the comparison of this study and Turchin's data, red maple's overall growth is less abundant, moving from 48-fold between 2006 and 2015 to 36-fold when considering the whole timeline, whereas red spruce's overall growth has doubled between the two timelines. Although red maple's growth is less abundant, it is still increasing with an overall rate of 36-fold, which is much larger than the three-fold difference seen in red spruce. As the forest fluctuates near the climax community, red maple would likely be the dominant species for the foreseeable future, given the large growth rate. However, as time goes on, the red spruce and other soft-standing trees will slowly approach the maple's dominance, which will move the forest toward the end of the transitional succession and back toward the original community prior to the hurricane, which could take decades. We believe that Point Pleasant Park is at the beginning stages of late succession. Referring to Figure 5 where the aggregation phase and the transition phase meet, we believe that the aggregation phase has already occurred and that the tree abundance has already significantly increased and is now in the process of stabilizing to a maintainable equilibrium. A study done by Turkin in Point Pleasant Park from 2006 to 2015 recorded ground flora and tree species. She found that in 2015, tree populations increased four to eight folds, while the ground flora decreased one to two folds. This is in response to the process of succession, as there are significant changes in the physical environment when developing a new forest canopy. Since 2015, more data has been collected by ecology students at Dalhousie on tree density and diversity. Looking at figure two and figure four during the years of Turkin's study in 2016 to 2015, we can observe significant increases in tree abundance, which aligns with the criteria of phase two from the biomass accumulation model for forest ecosystem recovery. However, examining figure two further, we see that the total tree density after 2020 has overall more data recordings below the trend line than above it, with some instances having a significant gap. The same can also be said for figure four, where species diversity is measured. For these reasons, we believe that an exponential increase in tree abundance is coming to an end and that Point Pleasant's forest structure has become more complex with a variety of tree maturities from pre and post hurricane, signifying the transition to late succession.